Good morning, everybody, and welcome to the post-game show. After a big election night, coast to coast, we've got some results. Yeah, you were in Virginia yesterday interviewing uh, Governor Yunkin, and things uh, did not yeah. go as he had hoped. No, indeed. And so what we're going to do, uh, sit back, pour yourself a cup of coffee, and we're going to explain it all. Let's start over at the big board in Lawrence Jones. Let's start in the Commonwealth of Virginia. Okay, good morning, family. It was a big upset for the governor there. Not only did he lose uh, the House, but they were not able to flip the senators. Let's look at the map right here. You got Democrats at 51 to the Republicans, 47. And when you go over to the House, can we switch? And then you got 21 Democrats there in the Senate and then 17 Republicans uh, in the um uh, in the Senate there. The big upset was one thing uh, particular. When it comes to abortion, Republicans just weren't able to rally. Also, when you look at the issues uh, such as crime and everything, they didn't, weren't able to run on that. When you look at also, the Democrats outspent the Republicans there. And when it comes to early voting, the Democrats really pounded the pavement there, guys. They did indeed, Lawrence. Yeah, a lot, lot at stake. In Virginia, that was really a loss for the governor. And, and he traveled all over that state to all the different districts. They spent a ton of money trying to get uh, the Republicans to win in both of those, both of those um, establishments. But the no abortion ban, I mean, I think that that's what the voters said. What did he want, Brian? He wanted 18 weeks. Is that right, the governor? 16, I think 15 weeks. 15. And he also said, you know, flip the House, uh, keep the Senate. And but he lost both. What a uh, an epic failure by Governor Yunkin. This is a huge loss for him, who everyone looked at, if not 24, which I thought was a long shot, definitely 28. But it's a tough. Would, that's a tough state to win in, though, because it is. It's you have equal amount of Republicans and Democrats. And when we went there, when Governor Yunkin was running, I remember people were really angry. They did not want him to win on the Democratic side. We were standing outside of a grocery store asking people as they came out. Either they loved him or they were right. completely against him. Well, you know, uh, Virginia, for the most part, has been a bluish state, and it just got a lot bluer. And, you know, the number one most motivating factor was the issue of abortion in the Commonwealth of Virginia, because while uh, Glenn Youngkin was trying to come up with a moderate approach, okay, yeah. let's let's say 15 weeks, and then uh, it would be a ban. And, and we should point out, that wasn't on the agenda. Mm -hmm. That wasn't actually on the ballot. Mm -hmm. But, you know, if you elect all these Republicans, I can get this done. It seemed like a moderate thing. But, unfortunately for him, uh, the people very loudly said, you know what? That interested in that, Lawrence. Yeah, it doesn't look like the ground game worked. Doesn't look like the early voting initiative that they said they were doing there worked. Uh, and it was a big upset there. Let's go to Ohio because that was also a big thing right there. When you look at the Republican, uh, this is what was posted on there, the provided the state the Constitution right to make... Uh, make and carry out one's productive decision. Let's take a look at what it said. So 56%, 0.3% said yes, and 43.7% said no. Uh, so that was a big one as well. It looks like abortion, abortion, abortion was the big uh, issue for the folks out there. Also, when you look at the Midwest, Republicans just aren't doing a good job of getting people to turn out. And it looks like they focus on this economic message, but the, the, the voters just aren't buying it. Guys. No Senate, uh, no Senate seat up, no governor's seat up. Uh, this big issue was up. And here we are, two years after the Dobbs decision, mm -hmm. and the Republicans have no idea how to message it. And two years after the Dobbs decision, they're still getting outraised by uh, Democrats in every major election and every major issue. How do Republicans figure this out? Because we heard Nikki Haley on the stage. She said, I'm not for abortion. Mm -hmm. My husband was adopted. I had a tough time getting pregnant. However, the chances of us changing this are null and void. It's not going to happen. Let's be realistic about it. And then she said, and let's not vilify women if they've made that decision or doctors who have made that decision or don't want to perform them. Sure. It ultimately, it comes down to the question of abortion and Americans as we have seen, once again, the predominant issue across the board was, was abortion. People don't want restrictions on it. And even though Glenn Youngkin in the Commonwealth of Virginia tried to come up with a common sense approach, a moderate mm -hmm. approach, it did not work. And in Ohio, you know, they were simply trying to uh, approve a measure to build in 
protections and people didn't want that. And that, the, that number you just showed, Lawrence, is about the same margin that recreational weed passed in Ohio. Yeah, so Ainsley, the, also when you look at the CNN polling, it says 68% uh, said that the abortion issue was extremely yeah. or very important, and only 32% said that it was moderate or not important. There. It's nearly 7 in 10. Republicans have to figure out what their messaging is, like Brian was saying, in order to go forward in the next election. We looked at this midterm election as a way to um, gauge how Republicans or how Democrats react going forward for right. 2024. So Republicans need to look at all of these numbers and really think about what's more important. Right. Yes, it's it, uh, most people that are Republicans are probably pro-life right. and we love our babies and I love being a mother but what's most important mm -hmm. Republicans well, taking over and Republicans being able to, to keep our country well the other thing is important is they didn't message crime they didn't message no. the border they have not touched the inner city mm -hmm. so whatever uh, people are however the mayors are failing mm -hmm. however the issues are falling short how the whether it's the, the bail reform or whether it's the, uh, the lack of police officers on the street, nothing was emphasized or matters as much as that, or people are just staying home. Yeah. I mean, the Republicans have a lot to work with. They're just not working with it. Well, but ultimately, it comes down to the Democrats have a really potent issue, and that is abortion, because, you know, ever since Roe v. Wade was overturned, Pretty much every time the Democrats have run on abortion, they have won. And here's mm -hmm. the bad, you know, and was last night at a harbinger for 2024, as you were uh, alluding to, Ainsley? Absolutely. You know why? Because uh, there are opponents and proponents uh, trying to put abortion rights on the ballots in the states of Florida, Nevada, Arizona, and Pennsylvania. So it's going to be... You know, if you're a Republican running in those states, you're going to have a tough 2024. So one of the states that Republicans would push back on is the state of Mississippi. Mm -hmm. They ran on abortion. That right. was the one issue. And Governor Tay Reeves was able to get 51.8% of the vote. Why is this important? 40% of the uh, black uh, uh, individuals that live in that state uh, is 40% of the state. This is the largest state for black voters there. And they really thought they were going to get black voters to show up for the Democratic Party. Yeah. As you know, Mississippi has a water issue, a crime issue, an economic issue, and black voters and did not show up. And that's the hospital issue, too. They, the hospital a lot issue. of the hospitals had to shut down in the rural areas. They didn't show that's up Elvis them. Presley's cousin. I thought maybe that would help him. Maybe <laughs> nope. it did a little bit. <laughs> He's all um, shook up. Yeah. 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 The way Mississippi's <laughs> getting better is education. Yeah. They're starting to turn it around on education, and maybe that has something to do with it. Extremely Republican state, so that was supposed to be closer than it actually was. Mm -hmm. But that is a state where abortion was not an issue mm -hmm. because they were both anti-abortion. That's so exactly right. Wherever abortion was on the agenda, mm -hmm. the Democrats won, yeah. Brandon, except Presley. in Mississippi. And the reason was, and they'll appreciate this in Mississippi. We know, being from the South, the reason he was pro, he was pro-life. Mm -hmm. Presley, as a Democrat, was yep. because of he, you know, loves the Lord, and he felt like he that was important to him. Well, well yes. Don, with Donald Trump, and you talk about messaging, Trump said, and he got a lot of ridicule for it. We want to work something out on a compromise because it's not a good issue for us. Mm -hmm. And Ron DeSantis and Nikki Haley and everyone jumped all over him, and I, um, Tim Scott. And in the end, Donald Trump's instincts on the issue, regardless of his personal feelings, are 100% right. He goes, this is not a good political issue for us. Yeah, so uh, he, he has said that they've got some terrible state-level uh, mm -hmm. restrictions, and he's also said that state politicians have spoken inarticulately mm -hmm. about abortion. But ultimately, I think this, this particular issue, I think, is what... Uh, is, might put a smile on Joe Biden's face. After the terrible polls mm -hmm. he's had in the last week, I think he thinks, and his people around him are saying, if abortion is going to be a big mm -hmm. thing, you would be able to win on that alone. And Brian, to your point about Donald Trump, you know, he has been vague on specifics regarding abortion. But what Democrats will do next year is they will say, well, Donald Trump doesn't have a specific abortion mm -hmm. policy, but he's the guy who put three justices on the Supreme Court who overturned Roe v. Wade. They say he's so going to work out a compromise. Him. So to, to you guys' point about Donald Trump, I think it's important to know as we move to Kentucky, Donald Trump got 62% of the vote in the last right. election against Joe Biden, and Andy Beshear held on to the state. People say that he's a moderate, he's trustworthy, they like him. But as you know, Daniel Cameron was a rising star in the Republican Party. They expected him to win this. Mm -hmm. When I was talking to folks on the ground there, they said it was 
highly unlikely because people like the governor there. But the one thing you saw in, in this election is the black voters came out, but also the activists came out. Mm -hmm. And they really went right. after Daniel Cameron with the Breonna Taylor thing. Yeah. So they went door to door, uh, and they just did not show up for the guy. And but he's the AG. They, did, they didn't the like AG. some of the laws that were in yeah. place under him. But Bashir, you, you and I were talking about this yesterday. Mm -hmm. His father was governor, is that right? Yeah. Yeah, and and he's Republican. Just, and he's beloved. His father was a Republican, but he's so moderate. Mm -hmm. The Republicans also like him there. I'd like to add one, uh, one more thing. Uh, Ronald McDaniel told me on Monday that uh, Cameron was getting killed on certain abortion ads, and he never responded. They thought, we're just going to run out the clock. We like we were on the polls. And that was it. Again, back to it. And it seems in every major race, Republicans were outraged two and sometimes three to one. So they got a year to change that. And also in the Commonwealth of Kentucky, uh, he won Bashir won after hammering uh, Cameron for supporting the state's near total ban on abortion. So, so abortion across the board. Overall, it looks like the Republicans were outspent, they were outworked, and it seems like there's still no real strategy as it relates to early voting. It looks like the Democrats have an operation to get it done, uh -huh. and I know some Republicans have said they want to turn that around, but it looks like the anti-early voting message for states that allow it is just not helping and, their and turnout. Bashir would not say anything about Joe Biden. They tried to right. pin yeah, Biden to Bashir. True. He ran from the president, didn't bring it up, said, I have nothing to do with the president or his policies. We need to talk to Ronna McDaniel and find out what the plan is for Republicans when it comes to the abortion issue. How do you handle that? And he finds the, a lot of them uncoachable. She does? She finds a lot of the candidates they a don't bit listen uncoachable, to her? yeah. Well, that's an issue for Republicans. And then Democrats, we've seen they're facing in 2024 with everything happening in Israel, that party's divided. So mm -hmm. divisions on both sides. I, I think the big story is going to be we heard about the red wave uh, the last time. Right. Now we heard about the big wins that were going to be made in Virginia, that uh, Daniel Cameron was going to win Kentucky. Mm -hmm. That was wrong. It looks like the Republicans need a full autopsy of where this polling looks like there's some interest in the Republican Party. But when it comes to getting the folks to the polls, Filling on this. See, so we've had changes when they, we go 2024 with the president on the on the on the ballot. The ballot. Yeah, and if if you are if if abortion is on the agenda on the ballot in your state, the Democrats, as of last night right. and in the past special elections, Democrats win. So yep. so far, seven states are off the board. Yep, Lawrence, right. great job over there on Thank the big board. You're Very nice and done. In a little while. All right. I'm Steve Ducey. I'm Brian Kilme. And I'm Ainsley Earhart. And click here to subscribe to the Fox News YouTube page to catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis.